for today's magic um, act, we need a pen and paper. No, never mind. I, I don't know magic. That's that's another YouTuber. I don't do those type of things. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about how I built the levels for Gunslux Rogue Tactics because the last few videos I've been mostly talking business and not much game development. So today we're gonna do this game development. Um, I had a few questions from people asking me which tile editor I use. A tile editor is an editor you can use to create levels for a game. But I don't really use a tile editor because most of the levels, uh, most of the work that goes into my levels is done by the computer. So today I wanted to explain how it works. I've talked about it a little bit uh, many months ago, but I'm going to do a much better visual example for you guys. And um, that's why I needed the pen and the paper. No magic, just pen and paper. So welcome back, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and today I wanted to explain how the levels in Gunslug Rogue Tactics are created or built. Um, in case you don't know what the game is, here's a little view of these levels. Alright, so how these levels are created is pretty simple and straightforward, but it might still need a little bit of an explanation. The levels are basically what is most commonly referred to as random or procedurally generated, which doesn't mean that the level is completely generated by the computer because there's still a lot of rules going on behind the scenes to just make sure that the levels are actually fun and working and interesting. So let's start with uh, pieces of paper and some space or some room maybe on the floor. That's probably the best option. So um, guys, we need some room. Can everybody leave please? Thanks. There's nobody here, but I always wanted to say that. So anyway, we're gonna do this on the floor. All right, so how are these levels being created? Well, for this, we have a different type of room types or templates. Um, the first room type is this one, which is called room type number one. And as you can see, uh, there's a wall at the bottom, a wall at the top meaning we can only exit this room on the left side or the right side depending on what's on the left or right side let's place it right here and that brings us to room type number two which has a wall at the top uh, but we can enter from the left the right and exit at the bottom so much more flexible than room type number one let's place it next to room type number one so now we can already see what's happening we can start moving from the first room up to the second room and let's place room type number three underneath it which allows us to go left right and upwards basically it's room type number two but flipped upside down and then bring us to room type number four really the most flexible room type we can enter and exit on all sides which is very flexible room type number four and this is really how we build up the level every room type has a bunch of variations i think i have right now eight or nine maybe even 10 versions of room type number one, uh, a bunch of number twos, threes, and fours. And by mixing these room types and these variations, we basically built the building. So what does all this mean if we put it in a digital form? Well, let me show you how I actually create these little rooms. Uh, this is code that runs inside my game. It's, I guess it's some type of tile editor, but it's not a tile editor you can find anywhere besides in the actual game. So we're just gonna start up the editor and then I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of how these room templates look and all the stuff that's actually put in those room templates. But because there's a lot more going on there to make it more random uh, and uh, have more interesting levels. So let's just start up our little editor. All right, so at the top, you can see the various template types I have. Um, there are more than four types I just mentioned, but I'll get to the uh, template zero and five in a minute. Um, right now, this is room type number one. Um, you can see that all these levels have basically um, no escape on the bottom side of the levels. So you might also notice that some of the little blocks inside the room are uh, having this little 50% in them or even a 33%. This is basically telling the generator or the computer that if you're generating this room, there's only a 50% chance that this tile should be generated or 
33% if it's even a red square or a red item. So this gives me a little bit more control over uh, how many enemies will be showing up. There's a chance that all of them will spawn at once because well 50% is going to be random so if all of the 50% actually spawn then we'll have a very full room of enemies or whatever it is but this allows me to give even more randomness to every room by just making certain things not appear all the time or not every time. And then the generator does a lot of stuff for me because if a light is uh, near the ceiling or attached to the ceiling, it will turn it automatically in a more bluish light that is really a ceiling type light. And if it's free floating in midair somewhere in the room, it will most likely be a red light. And to make it even more random, those lights can then actually uh, be faulty and they might blink here and there, which adds to the randomness of the whole world. Which brings us to room type zero which is basically filler. Um, how this works is the computer starts at the top row of the building and then it starts to create a little wiggly row down to the bottom of the building. That's not gonna cover all the areas in the building. So we're gonna have rooms that are simply nothing. They are not one, two, three or four templates. They're just not used by the computer. For those templates, we can either make them, well, keep them solid, like just one big rock, big wall, and nothing can pass through it. Or we can randomly put a room type zero there, which is really anything goes. And in some cases, we want the building to have a very specific type of room. And that's where room type number five comes in. These room types are things like a room with a rocket in there, uh, which is required for the sabotage mission. If you need to sabotage a rocket, we need to make sure there's actually a rocket in the world. So these rooms are placed um, at the right position when that's required. Again, the generator does all these things. I just design a couple of them and then the generator picks them randomly and places them. And finally, there's a little uh, room type six, I guess. It's uh, the top world, the overworld, um, which is a special case. And it has like more Mario style platform rooms that are just stitched from left to right. And that's really how we build the overworld. So let me just show you and walk you very quickly through some of the code that actually generates these buildings. All right, so this is the entry point of this whole generator stuff. Uh, we generate, first we clear the whole building. So all the rooms in the building are cleared and set as not used. Then we start to generate uh, from the top downwards. So we start at a random location in the horizontal first row and then we work our way down until we reach the bottom of the building. Um, this is just, pretty simple uh, path defining based on random uh, directions. We go left or we go right and we go downwards and then right, right, downwards, left, downwards, right, downwards. Something like that is gonna make the whole building. And then we have of course all these extra rooms that aren't used and we fill them up with, um, well, basically a zero type room. So the anything goes room. After this path is created from the top to the bottom, we actually start generating rooms. That's basically going through all the rooms from top left to bottom right, uh, check which room type, and then pick one of the random versions of that room type. And we can even opt for flipping it horizontally because it doesn't really matter. All these templates can be mirrored, which adds more to the randomness. And then we need to create monster entities so really yes this is where we process every tile and check if it should be a monster or whatever it should be and we place it in the building it does a lot of extras because um, if we have doors we need to make sure there are keys enough for it and keys go into consoles so we need to make sure there are consoles and we need to make sure that the door is always after the console else we have a very big problem all right so the first question that might pop up in your head why do it this way? Why am I putting all this time into creating code that could have bugs in it to create levels? And why don't I just use a tile editor and create these levels? Um, main reason is pretty simple, content. This gives me a lot of levels, almost an unlimited amount of buildings that are uh, very unique, very different. Every time you play the game, it will have something different. It doesn't mean it has to be different because if I want to, I can create the same type of levels every time you play. It's really based on the seating number and that's just any random number in my case. So every building is based on different numbers. And if you would always enter the same seating numbers, you'd always get the same building. So it is random, but it's not fully random at all. There are a lot of rules going on behind this and it allows for so much variation that my games have more content because of it. And that's it. I really hope that all of this was, was, well, worth it. That it was interesting to you as a game developer or gamer or whatever you are. And if you have questions, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to chat about it a little bit more. You can also hang out in the Discord link, Discord. 
And um, I think that's it for this week. I'll see you guys next week, although I don't really have any ideas for next week's video just yet. But I'm sure we'll figure something out. If you have ideas, let me know in the comments below, because at some point I might run out of ideas for videos and I'm always open to suggestions. Maybe I should be talking about marketing next week. I've been doing some marketing for Gunslugs Rogue Tactics, the game I've been working on. Check the link in the description below. See, that was marketing. Alright, that's it for, for this week. Bye!